All right, let's start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Bahakadash, that's Yahweh, be the true name of our Heavenly Father in Hebrew, Yahweh Shai, be the true name of our Lord and Savior, and Bahakadash, being the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth. Honors to the brothers that's pushing this truth, spreading this word, risking their life and freedom to do so. Shalom to the hopeful relay, the one third of our people who's going to return back to the Lord during these last days so that he will have mercy on them in the time of judgment. Shalom. So we back with another lesson through the power of the Holy Spirit. And... The topic of today's lesson is we're going to talk about the vengeance of the Lord because these crazy Christians, white America and the black church, they tell you that the Lord is coming to spread peace, joy and happiness. And that couldn't be further from the truth because, in fact, he's coming to do the exact opposite. That's why our first scripture reads, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. That's how Yahweh Shai is holding a sword in his hand. And these words are written in red, so he actually spake these words with his own mouth. And again, think not that I don't come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Because one of the things we got to get clear, this world is full of wickedness and evil and destruction. You can't spread peace in something that's overflowing with wickedness and destruction. So you can't spread peace in a place full of wickedness. So before peace can be spread, the wickedness is, is going to have to be wiped out. And the Lord is going to bring, bring peace, happiness, and joy to some people, but not to everybody. And that's part of the Lord's vengeance. And with the Lord's vengeance, he's going to avenge a certain people. And he's going to take out his wrath and lay his vengeance on another people. And those two parties are named in the scriptures. So our first clue that we're going to look at is Psalm chapter 58, verse 10. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. And see of what vengeance? The vengeance of the Lord, Yahweh Shai. And who is the righteous? It's the Lord's chosen people, the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and not all our people, just the one-third, the elect, who's going to receive salvation for returning back to the Lord during these last days. They are the ones that's going to rejoice when we see the vengeance of the Lord. And let's continue. So the vengeance is going to be for the righteousness, but let's see who he's going to lay his vengeance on. He the righteous shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. So the righteous, the elect, the one third, we're going to be stepping over the dead bodies in the blood of our enemies, which would be the wicked. And that's who the Lord is laying his vengeance on. And who is the wicked? Turn to Malachi 1, 1 and 4. It tells you that Esau, that Edom is the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord will have indignation forever. Indignation is righteous anger, but it listed and named Edom, the Edomites, the white race, as the border of wickedness. So the scriptures listed them by name as the wicked. And this word wicked comes up through the Bible quite often, Old and New Testament. We now know that this is talking about the Edomites, Esau, Edom, Malachi 1 to 4. So again, the righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. So the Lord is going to avenge the righteous by taking his vengeance out on the wicked. It's a movie, good versus evil. We good and they the evil. So let's go to our next scripture. And a little further proof that the righteous is Israel who the Lord is avenging and that the Lord is taking out his vengeance upon Edom is right here in this scripture, Ezekiel chapter 25, verse 14. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom 
according to mine anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So going back, the righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. We now know that that righteous who's going to rejoice at that vengeance would be the Lord's people, the people of Israel, and that the Lord is going to lay his vengeance upon Edom, who is the wicked, going back to Malachi 1 to 4, and also Psalms 58 and 10, when it says, he shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. So the Lord is avenging the righteous Israel and taking out his vengeance on the wicked who are the Edomites. And this verse is going to another direction, but we just wanted to show who the Lord is laying his vengeance on specifically and who he's avenging specifically. So now we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 63 verse 4. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. So this is Yahweh Shai speaking through the prophet Isaiah. And Yahweh Shai said, again, for the day of vengeance is in my heart. What's the day of vengeance? The day that the Lord returns and judge all the nations and our people who didn't turn back to him. That's the day of vengeance. So the Lord said that he's not coming to bring peace, but a sword. That's the day of vengeance. And as we continue, it reads, in the year of my redeemed is come. Redeemed is another word for those who are going to be saved. So the year of my redeemed or the year of his elect, the year of the one third who's going to receive salvation is come. And we now know that that year is going to be either this year or next year. It ain't much time. We see how the prophecies are unfolding. With the prophecies, things are going to happen in a certain order. So out of all the stuff that's supposed to happen, we come into the end of the list. And that's going to be World War Three in the microchip. So again, for the day of vengeance is in my heart. And Yahweh Shai said this over 2,000 years ago. Really, probably over 3,000 years ago. And this is spirit. Vengeance, that's the joy of a man. That's why going back to Psalms 58 and 10, it says the righteous shall rejoice when he, when he seeth the vengeance. It's talking about the man of the Lord. It's not talking about the women. We're going to rejoice when we see the vengeance of the Lord. Because again, vengeance is the joy of a man. That's why Tupac, in one of his, one of his songs, the lyrics go, revenge is the sweetest joy next to getting you know what. For those of us who are old enough to know the song, that's scriptural. Because again, Yahweh Shai said, for the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year of my redeemed has come. Meaning that the year that the, that the Lord is going to come save his people. And this is what we tell the people. The time is coming for the Lord to come save us. So get ready. And that's going to take us to our next scripture, Isaiah 61 and 2. Because this is what we do to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that more. This is what we're doing. We are proclaiming the acceptable year of the Lord. The acceptable year of the Lord meaning the right, the rightful time for Yahweh Shai to return. Yahweh Shai has to return after all the prophecies has been unfolded. He has to return after this truth has been spreaded to the four corners of the world. He has to return after every nation on the earth, every country has heard this truth. That's why it says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. This truth has spread all over, so this is the acceptable year. If it ain't this year, it's next year. And with that acceptable year of the Lord, within that year, when he comes back, that's going to be the day of vengeance. So if it's this year, hey, one of these days, it's going to be a day of vengeance for the Lord. If it's next year, to be the acceptable year, we know that day is coming. So, and the, and the Lord's vengeance is to come for all that more. And if you look on the earth, the only people who are mourning are the children of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, those who know this truth and those who don't know this truth. And let's start with the ones that's caught up in the world. How do they mourn? 
every time one of our people get shot down in the, in the streets, they physically crying, weeping and hollering. That's them mourning. And when people want to get together and protest and march, that's them mourning. When people want news coverage and people go to the court and want to testify, that's them mourning. Black justice and Black Lives Matters and civil rights, all of that was a form of us mourning and crying out. But those who come back to this truth, we know that that is our vanity. That's all going to get to nothing because the Lord's name is not in it. The correct way to mourn is to praise the Lord using the correct names, come back to him, seek him, learn the scriptures, and those who study and watch our videos, that's you mourning because you need to be comforted. And you comfort it through the scriptures because you find out that the Bible is your book and that the Bible is for you only and that the Lord sees your oppression and your struggle and he's going to come back to save you. But before he comes back to save you physically, he's going to comfort you spiritually through the scriptures and through these lessons. And, the, and us that's doing these lessons, we mourning, we crying out to the Lord. We spreading all the lies and wickedness and exposing all these people in the world. We trying to spread this comfort by doing these lessons, but not everybody see it that way. And this is what we tell the people. Hey, the, the scriptures is the answer to all your problems. It ain't college. It ain't money. Because no matter how far you get in America, you still a Negro or a Mexican in America. You can still be pulled over and shot by an angry cop. You, they can still throw the book at you in court for any reason they feel like. And that's what we tell the people. And that's why it says, say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with the recompense, he will come and save you. So when it says, say to them <clears throat> that are of a fearful heart, this is talking about the elect the one third of our people that's coming back to this truth. And what are we fearful of? We fearful of the Lord. <clears throat> because the scripture said, fear him and do all his commandments. The scriptures also said that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So say to them that are of a fearful heart, say to them that fear the Lord, be strong and fear not. Meaning don't fear the people of the earth. Don't fear the people that's oppressing us beginning with Esau, Edom, the white people, and all the other nations that's following after him. So be strong and fear not. Behold, your God, our God, will come with vengeance. So our God, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, is coming with vengeance to avenge us. Even God with a recompense. Recompense means to repay. So the Lord is coming back with vengeance to repay those who troubled us. And that's literally word for word in the scriptures, but we ain't got it today. But also it reads, he will come and save you. So the Lord coming with vengeance is him saving us. So the Lord is going to save us, but take his vengeance out on somebody else. And that's, and that's the theme behind most popular movies. You got the good people that's being treated badly. They being killed. Then you got the superhero that come with his vengeance to lay upon the evil one, upon the wicked, and he saved those who need saving. We the only people in the earth that need saving. We the only ones that's crying out and seeking comfort in all the wrong places. Seeking comfort by getting on TV, by going to college, by stacking up a bunch of money, crying to court, protesting. We've been doing all that stuff for over 400 years and ain't got us nowhere. So... Let's continue. And that's why Romans 12 and 19 reads, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Yeah, and that's why the scriptures also say, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now, nah, the enemy is flesh and blood. Like this picture right here. You got these fake J's over here. You can obviously see that our enemy is flesh and blood. If you type in black people being hanged, you're going to come across thousands of these pictures. And this is talking about the Negroes. We ain't even got on the other nine tribes. The Negroes, 
I'm sorry, the Hispanics and the Native Americans, the Colombians, the North American Indians, Seminole Indians, Dominicans, all of them, they all suffered this same treatment. So the enemy is flesh and blood. But when it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, it means we don't engage in the battles of the flesh. So yeah, the white man, the Edomites, they oppressing us and they killing us, but we are not to engage them in battle because we fight the spiritual battle. And the spiritual battle is coming back to the Lord and spreading his word because the Lord's word needs to be spread before the Lord takes action. And that way, the Lord can prove who his chosen people are because his chosen people, we telling y'all what's about to happen all around from now to the from now to the day that America is destroyed and Yahweh Shai returns, even to the kingdom of heaven, we can tell you everything that's going to happen, exactly how it's going to happen. And when it does happen, you're going to know that we were the Lord's chosen, that he revealed his secrets to us. So again, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Why is that? But rather give place unto wrath. So give place unto wrath unto who? For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Say if you have a Bashem, you have a shy. Let's go back. It says, for it is written. Where is this written at? Well, let's look up. We in Romans chapter 12. This is the New Testament. But again, in the New Testament, it says, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay. So this is telling you that this was already stated and already written elsewhere in the Bible. And it was actually written in the Old Testament. We just got it. So this shows that the Old Testament matters and that the New Testament wouldn't exist without the Old Testament. I think I said it right. The New Testament wouldn't exist off the old, without the Old Testament because the New Testament is built off the Old Testament. So again, New Testament, Rome, Romans chapter 12, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Where was it written at? I think Isaiah 61 and 2, 63 and 4. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart and the year of my redeemed. So that's where it was written at. So again, for the day of vengeance is in mine heart. That's where it was written at. Going back to Romans 12, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. So this is just um, the Lord reassuring us that he got us, that he's going to uh, come back for us. And that's why going back to Psalms 58 and 10, we're going to read 10 again to continue through verse 11. The righteous, now we know who the righteous are, those who needs to be comforted, those who are mourning, which would be the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the true children of Israel. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that a man shall say, Verily, there is a reward for the righteous. Verily, he is a God that judges in the earth. Because right now, people feel like the Lord don't care about what's going on in the earth. So people doing whatever. But they're going to find out in, a, in, a, in judgment that he is a God that judges up in the earth. He doesn't let you do what you're going to do so that there is no mercy or no excuse for you once the Lord do what he's going to do to you. Because the Lord is going to avenge millions and millions of people. So a lot of blood going to be shed. But going back up, it reads, So that a man shall say, Verily, there is a reward for, uh, for the righteous. What's the reward for the righteous? Going back up, he shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that a man shall say, Verily, there is a reward for the righteous. So washing your feet in the blood of the wicked, stepping in the blood and in the dead bodies of your enemies, that's a reward for the righteous. The Christian Church of White America will tell you that the righteous is going to be rewarded with peace and happiness and all that nonsense. That's true, but you can't have peace and happiness in a place that's full of wickedness. And America is the mother of all this wickedness in the earth. So 
like we said, the wickedness has to be wiped out before peace and joy can be spread. But when we read this, so that a man shall say, Verily, there is a reward for the righteous. Um, the righteous ain't going to just be rewarded with peace and happiness. We're going to be rewarded by seeing our enemies fall. We're going to be rewarded by washing our feet with the blood of our enemies, by stepping all over our enemies. That's going to be our first reward because that's that's the order of things. The, uh, that's the order of the process. We first going to wash our feet in the blood of the wicked. And then after that, the kingdom of heaven can be established in the earth. We can live happily ever after in peace and happiness and rejoice. But we can't do that until the wicked is wiped out, until our enemies is taken down. So the righteous, the reward of the righteous, it, it ain't all good. It's good for us, but bad for somebody else. Because again, a reward for the righteous is going to be to wash our blood, to wash our feet in the blood of our enemies, which would be the wicked. And this is also written in Ecclesiasticus, I think chapter 25, verse 27. Let's read that. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy, and the tenth I will utter with my tongue. So there's nine things that the Lord says to be happy in heart. And what's the ninth thing? A man that have joy of his children. That's number nine. What's number ten? Let's get that. And he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. So again, there be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy. And the tenth I will utter with my tongue. A man that have joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. So that's going to be part of the reward for the righteous. It's to see the fall of your enemy, to wash your feet in the blood of the wicked. That's how we're going to know we made it. That's going to be the vengeance of the Lord when we step in over the dead bodies of all the Edomites and all the nations that follow after them and oppressing us. And again, that's the reward of the righteous. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. What vengeance are we going to see? It's going to be the Lord's vengeance. How are we going to know that his vengeance has taken place, has been completed? When we washing our feet in their blood. That's why the Lord said there are nine things that he judges to be happy. And the tenth thing that he judges to be happy is he that lives to see the fall of his enemy. Because for hundreds of years, we witnessing something that our ancestors could have never thought would have happened, like the fall of America. We're going to see the Edomites uh, be wiped out by Yahweh Shai. That's something our ancestors dreamed of, never thought would have happened. And you got our sensitive people worrying about why the white man can't receive salvation, why everybody can't get into the kingdom of heaven. Your ancestors will be utterly disappointed in you. So again, this is the reward of the wicked. The Lord is going to allow us to see the fault of our enemies. And the Lord is going to save us and avenge us by laying his vengeance on the wicked and all the nations that follow after the wicked and oppressing us. So this is the Lord's vengeance. Until next time, Shalom.